to give back in that way. Hello, everyone. We are wrapping up two days wall-to-wall -wall coverage from theCUBE live at HPE Discover Barcelona 2023. I'm Rebecca Knight, Rob Streche here. We've been we, together again, two days of co coverage. What a conference. Yeah, I, 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 it's been fantastic. I think, again, the energy level has been spectacular, and I think the message has been on point. Uh, I think there's been so a couple of really good key themes throughout from the edge to cloud with the, all of the HCI improvements and I, I think we'll talk about that a little bit but I think that you know, when you start to look at sustainability, security, networking, I think a lot of that is key to the underpinnings of AI and where customers really want to go yeah. with that and being able to protect that data and store that data so that they can actually build AI. So I, I think it's been, uh, it's been a crazy couple days. It has, and yeah. we're going to unpack this all yes. with our special guest, Dion Bear. Welcome back to theCUBE. Thank you so much. Uh, Global Hybrid Cloud Sales Director at Microsoft. Yeah. So um, you've been here, and you're actually here back here tomorrow, but yep. I'd love to get your take on, on this conference, sort of, sort of what you're seeing, what you're hearing, yeah. trends, what struck you most, how about, how about that? It, it Start there. It's an interesting few days, right? There's just so much going on in the industry itself, and then when you see this all coming together at a single event with HP and like GreenLake, it's just mind blowing, right? The great announcements on like AI acceleration with HP and Nvidia, you talk around the growth of GreenLake with like 1.3 billion dollar in one single quarter, 30% right. year over year, it truly shows momentum in hybrid cloud. And I think if you take that all together with the customers that we talk to and the partners that we have here, I think it's a great event to be all together. So yeah, it's a good momentum, I would say. Yeah, I, I would say so. And I think you know Antonio had done his earnings call yeah. just before we got here. And I think, you know, like you said, the 1.3 uh, billion in ARR. So again, it's a cloud operating model. It's, yeah. And I think that's what really, I think, you know, Antonio leaned in early, and I think we talked about this yesterday on the segment you were on, that he really leaned into hybrid very early on and, and kind of took you know, a, a course for HPE to go down that route. Yeah. And I think it's been paying off for them. I think, oh, ab you know. Absolutely, and I think one of the things that Antonio said as well is like, HPE is becoming the fourth cloud, right? Like you have the big cloud providers there, and now you have HPE there as well. And I think the beauty of this is, it all works together, right? We all are depending on each other, and when you're arriving in a hybrid world where data sits everywhere, anywhere, how do you then partner together? And I think that partnership between Microsoft and HP to really unlock that potential for our joint customers is just really beautiful to see. Yeah, yeah that, that's really been a striking, I mean, talking about the themes that we keep hearing, um, the, the strength of the partnership between yep. Microsoft and HPE because of the common values and the common yeah. priorities and the common mindset around how we do business and that sustainability is really a core underpinning of everything we do. Yep. Um, what are some of the things that you're hearing from customers on the floor? I mean, th that's always sort of the yeah. most fun. The <laughs> sessions, yeah, but you know, the, it's yeah. It's, it's, it's funny that you're saying this because sustainability is such an important topic yeah. for many, many customers right? Like, we have all those massive companies and as well smaller companies making those announcements around like how they want to save cost and like and make sustainability a really important strategy as part of their organization. And so when you really think around sustainability, it's like, it's not just saying it and like putting it on your website, but how do you carrying it out? How do you get net zero in your emissions? How do you reduce the water waste of cooling down your machines? How do you spend less electricity? And so all those things together is a really important topic. And so this week we have spent a lot of time with all kinds of customers. Like we have talked with customers from retailers, like manufacturers, banking customers, like public sector customers, government people. And they all have kind of a similar thing. It's like, hey, I have been using the native cloud Azure for a long, long time, and I'm a long, long time customer as well of HPE, but I want to bring it together. And how do I bring that together is really with hybrid cloud. And so hybrid is here to stay. The future is hybrid. And so when you talk back on like the conversation we had yesterday around like it's not only selling it, it's like co-engineering, co-developing, like building products to really address that need. It's really great to hear that from our customers that we are really addressing their needs and their wishes with like the joint solutions we have. So feedback is all over the place with like, hey, how can I pull through my security that I have in the native cloud all the way to the edge? How can I use Defender on GreenLake? Or hey, 
I have a VDI environment in the native cloud, and now I want to run it on-prem for my government people because I want them to have remote desktops at like scale. Can we do that on GreenLake? Yes, we can. And so, putting through the cloud all the way to the edge and the other way around is creating a solution that helps everyone in this economy. Yeah, I, I think that that is the key is that all these organizations don't want to have multiple different organizations oh. in their IT yeah. to deal with, hey, one for cloud, one for on-prem, one for edge, and they're trying to bring that together in what they're calling platform engineering. Yep. And I, I think having a common set of tools, a common set of services, standardizing, because I think you know, at one point in time I, I talked to a customer and they had they were in Azure, they were in AWS, they were in GCP. Exactly. They had three different teams that knew all the APIs for those three different, yep. and they were building tooling for those specific things. I think now, companies have, I think, wised up to a certain, a certain extent and said, hey, we want to standardize a little bit more, if not, maybe not on one, but put the majority on one also get better spending and better yeah. discounts and all of that. Are you seeing that the customers this week have been really leaning in on that? Because it, it sounds like it from what yeah. you were saying. Yeah, no, absolutely. Like you see a lot of like, like a single approach, a single strategy, right? If you talk around security or your workloads, how do you have like an edge to cloud or cloud to edge strategy in place as an organization? So we definitely see that. And this was as well what we addressed together with our joint development, right? Like Azure Arc is that tool that gives you that single plane of glass where you can manage like your multi-cloud, multi-hardware, multi-workloads in one single like user experience. And that works natively with the GreenLake portal as well, right? And there's where like you have GreenLake with the portal allowing customers to really manage that and putting through all the workloads like both ways. So yeah, we definitely see that that skill now happening in the market. So when you come co go back home and, yeah. and, you and you're telling your colleagues about what happened at HPE Discover, what are some of the things that you're going to take with you in terms of what you've learned here and, and, and apply it to say, hey, maybe there's a business opportunity for us over here or let's, let's yeah. I want to go over it this way. Um, that's a really good question. There's just so much learnings and I think like it's great to come in here with an open mindset. Like, like there's so much opportunity out there and all kinds of solutions. But I would say the takeaway for me is like AI. It's such an important topic and like you probably heard Many people talk about it, including Antonio. But like AI is a big umbrella name, right? And like under that, there's different kinds of services and different kinds of way to apply AI as well. Like how do you apply AI in the best possible way and in a sustainable way and responsible way? And so one of the things that I really heard this week from our customers is like, how can they apply AI at scale? and in a responsible way in their own environments. Like, we have all seen chat GTP, what consumers and companies love, but how we as Microsoft, we as a big stakeholder in that organization is converting that into a solution. How do you convert that solution inside your organization and making sure that your data is protected, your information is protected, and that it doesn't leak outside of your organization. So one of my big takeaway is like, the future is hybrid, but the future is hybrid with AI. And then how do you unlock that next wave of like data and apps at the edge to really connect everything from cloud to edge? Yeah, I, I think that's exactly it, is that AI is going to be everywhere. And I, it, yep. you know, with Sensei, who was on stage with Antonio, and they were doing computer vision to understand who's putting stuff in a cart or not taking it and taking it out and all of that. To your point, not an LLM, but it's, AI and ML underneath the hood that's really powering the computer Correct. vision. And I, I think that what I came away from here in talking to other customers around the, the, the coffee and the, the, the little cafe down there is that, you know, really they're, they're still on that learning curve. Yep. They're starting to dabble in this. Are you starting to see that where it's, it, they're starting to move from, hey, we're thinking about it to, hey, we're trying it out and we're bringing it in. Yeah, like I, I just think you nailed it down like with like the learning curve. Like customers are looking for trusted advisors and there's no, bus, no better trusted advisors than Microsoft and HPE. And so helping them in that journey to apply it inside the organizations is a great way. And so you really see like scenarios around, hey, how can we apply that in like my organization? How do I apply this in my factory? Hey, how do I apply this inside like my back end for my retail stores, like with smart cameras? And I think a beautiful case that Microsoft and HPE have been working on is with a big retailer in Asia, what we talked about yesterday as well, right? Like they had like cameras in the store, in each of the retail stores, and there were basically dumb cameras. Like it was just recording, huge amount of storage needed, but then they didn't do anything with that like video feed. 
And now they have like video analytics with AI on top of that, like live streaming and doing theft protection. So they get reports on what could potentially happen. What is like weird behavior? Are there people coming in that is maybe not the right people that you want to have in your store because of a security risk? And so getting that all applied in a strategy in such organization is where like customers are really looking for those trusted advisors. So yes, like we see definitely customers like making that jump right now to apply it, but it's so important to have the right partners around you to help you in that journey. Well that's what Antonio Neri was describing this morning, that so many organizations are data rich and insight poor. Exactly. So they, they have a lot of information, yeah. but they're, they're not parsing it to understand what is actually meaningful, what could move the needle, yeah. and how can we put some of these insights into action. So as you said, they're really, they, 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 they're looking to you Microsoft and HPE as trusted advisors to help them master this learning curve. How do you, how, how are you, I mean, did you have any conversations this, this week here where you, know, you heard about a particular pain point or something like that? that Oh, there's so many pain points, right? <laughs> That's the massive opportunity where we talk about yesterday as well, the future is bright. Um, I think one of the big pain points for customers is they don't know how to apply it. Mm. Like, they hear about it, they read about it, they see it on like YouTube and all those other great platforms that we are on right now as well. But like, how do you take that and really apply that in your organization is one really big challenge. And of course, you get now much more specialization across the world with partners, with ISVs who are applied in their software, with Microsoft, of course, being really smart on this, like as well like HPE building that up. Uh, but one of the big pain points is really around like, I have this vision, I have this strategy, but how do I make it actually actual and how do I apply that in my organization? And there's where I think you get a whole new wave of ecosystem partners who are really specialized in that kind of like deployments. And there's where I see the big pain point right now is like getting over the hurdle to find the right partners around you that has that knowledge, that trust, that really can help you in that journey. Yeah, I, I think that, that was another theme that we heard loud and clear this week again. And not surprising being in uh, Europe and that you know, partners mean a lot here. And yep. not just Microsoft and NVIDIA and others who are technology partners, but also a lot of, uh, you know, like Tiger and a number of the other partners who are buying from HPE and Microsoft Correct. and building other clouds and building other pieces so that they can actually, you know, play in that ecosystem. Uh, I, I think that was, to me, one of the key factors was seeing how well people were bringing it together. A lot of the uh, value-added resellers and SIs in particular that were yeah. on, uh, I think, they seem like they are stepping up on the services side and really embracing the AI and trying to help people get ready for that while being becoming more sustainable. Because obviously if you have old kit, bringing yep. a new kit is going to be more efficient and maybe you can get a consolidation ratio as oh, well. I agree with you and like an important part of that is like that partner exists to your point, right? Like, yes, HPE and Microsoft build great joint solutions on hybrid cloud and that could include AI, but you have a whole partner network of like the big companies when you think about global system integrators like an Atos, Capgemini, Orange, and all those big ones who need to get on this journey as well. And so training their architects, training their product teams so they can add their value on top of that is a really critical piece of that as well. So the world is in a big change right now from an ecosystem perspective. I think the future's bright and we have a lot of opportunity ahead of us. Yeah. Well, that is the perfect note to end on, that Dion. Good. So <laughs> thank yeah. you so much. You just tied that up with a bow and um, Voila, thank you very much. No, thank you for this week. And yeah. I'm really excited no. to be it's been here. a lot of fun. Thanks for having yeah. us. It's been, it's been a lot of fun. I'm Rebecca Knight for Rob Streche and Dion Hubert. <laughs> we are wrapping up day, our two days of wall to wall coverage of HPE Discover Barcelona 2023. Stay to come back to us next time for our next show. You are watching theCUBE, the leader in high tech enterprise coverage. Mm -hmm.